Hello, everybody, and welcome to In the Don World. I'm so excited that you decided to join us again today. I have a wonderful guest, and I'm just so excited to talk to her. Her name is Gina King. She is the owner of Chef Gina's Mini Food. And we want to say thank you so much for being on the show, Gina. Oh, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited, excited to talk about your journey. Uh, I'm very excited to do that. So um, I want to I want to start off by asking you about your doll journey because I, I believe you are a dog collector. So I like to uh, like for you to share with people about your doll journey, and then I would love for you to share with people about your food journey because I think this is fascinating too. Oh gosh! So I have been a doll collector for quite some time. Um, I didn't get serious collecting dolls until my first Barbie convention. Um, which was, I don't remember what year it was, but it was in Chicago, mm -hmm. not this past, but like a few years back. Um, and then when I got my very first, uh, oh God, um, <laughs> Bob Mackie doll. No, nice, nice. <laughs> so I got the Bob Mackie doll. I was like, oh my gosh, I love this doll so much. <laughs> but um, growing up, my grandmother was never allowed to have dolls. Oh, um, wow. Her mom just never allowed them to play with dolls. And it, my whole childhood, my grandma had um, a whole house filled with dolls. So she would always just get us, you know, whatever doll she can find. And mm -hmm. then kind of started from there to be a serious collector it didn't start until the convention oh wow really okay <laughs> and so you bought you, at the convention you bought your first did you buy the Mackie doll or you just saw it and said I gotta collect more dolls that was the doll that we received at the convention and mm -hmm. then I got got an autograph and I got a picture with him I'm like oh my gosh I'm still happy about it <laughs> <laughs> That is so cool. So how many do you have a huge collection? I mean, because I, I collect a little bit of, of uh, Byron Lars dolls. That's pretty much where I okay. where I was introduced into, into the doll collecting. And I collect his dolls, but I don't really collect a lot of different other dolls. But So I have a small collection. So do you have a big collection or small collection? So I did sell a lot of them. Um, okay. I do have a fairly big collection, uh, maybe 200. I mean, to mm -hmm. me, that's big. 200. Um, most of them are put away just because I need the space for like the miniature food and I need <laughs> boxing room for boxing and photos, but I do have them. Okay. Um, the dolls that I have are Barbie. Um, I have Silkstone, G.I. Joe, um, the new, I don't know if you remember the one that Jesus style with Mary. Mm -mm. Oh my gosh. Ho hold on <laughs> right here. <laughs> The Jesus doll, here you go. Oh, wow. Is he not cool? He is 12 inches. I have him with Mary. Okay. I did a really cute little um, photo shoot with him in Orlando, Florida on the beach. A boat with fish that we made. We oh, almost nice. lost Jesus in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> we we're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so it, it actually turned out really cute. So I do That's have so cool. And I have some American Girl dolls. Mm -hmm. Um. Gosh, what else? Oh, I, I just started getting into um, Anna Lee, <clears throat> excuse mm -hmm. me, Anna Lee Dolls, and um, uh, Buyer's Choice. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. A good, a good, a good, uh, a good yes. mixture of, of dolls. So that's pretty neat. So when, okay, so let's, let's talk about your food journey. So because you had dolls, did you decide, oh, they need some food? Is that how that started? How did your food journey start? And, and, and also the mini foods, how did that start for you? Um, it started one day I got laid off from a job and my mom said, Gina, why don't you try making food for Barbie? And I said, mom, Barbie doesn't even eat. Why would anyone want this? <laughs> no one's gonna buy this this is so stupid <laughs> so we started making donuts and all kind of like little dinners selling it on ebay when it first started and it mm -hmm. really took off um so we're here 22 years later already and still selling miniature food which is wow which is great 22 so, years yes 22 we are the original dow food creator we started the whole trend for making um barbie food Wow. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a high five. Cause you know, I mean, I'm, you. I'm a trendsetter myself. It's all good. Right. It's like, <laughs> with my plus it's size awesome. fashion dolls, you know, um, and they're beautiful. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. But you know, it's funny because I think when you are a trendsetter, you're like way, uh, ahead of the, of the times. Sometimes that could be good. Sometimes it's not because people, <laughs> you really have to educate people and get people used to, you know, something new. So, mm -hmm. um, but uh, the fact that you did so well back then, that is, that's a testament to what people really wanted to see, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I think that's yeah. pretty cool. Now, did you, <laughs> did you make food before? I mean, were you in the food industry before? So I used to be a corporate chef. 
um, for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. Um, my specialty in that was cooking for high volume up to 30,000 people. Wow. Um, I know you're probably people. Like, where? <laughs> that is a lot of people. <laughs> Um, so I just worked at like, uh, Anheuser-Busch, um, SeaWorld. I was the corporate chef there. Okay. And, um, oh, I can see that. Okay. Yes. I can see the, the volume parks. of people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people. It is. <laughs> so did you cook, did you cook all kinds, uh, all kinds of food or did you have a, a specialty, you know, just something that you, you know, you did like you majored in cakes or, so, or was it just all types of food? So, um, during my cooking career, I worked, um, all over like, like, um, the zoo, um, the mm -hmm. amusement park, I did a different range of like in restaurants and then country clubs. So okay. I do have a wide range of, um, food experience, mm -hmm. um, with it too. Okay. Okay. So a variety, all different types of food. Mm -hmm. So when you decided to create the food, when your mother said, Hey, create these uh, food for the, for the dolls. And, and you said, you thought it was like, why, why would I do that? But you, <laughs> what you did, uh, what was the first, well, was there a, um, I guess a consensus on what the first thing you would make for the doll, you know, to, to showcase, or you just said, I'm just going to, I'm just going to pick something. So we decided to do donuts because we thought that might be easiest first. <laughs> <laughs> and we did that. Um, we eventually went to, um, we did a Buffalo steak dinner that actually made it to the nice national bison um, oh. magazine. So that was our first magazine that we were in. That and was nice. So we just kind of just went from there and then tried to make foods that we liked. And then unfortunately mm -hmm. we're like, wow, this looks really good. Maybe we should go get some donuts. <laughs> <laughs> like, we'd have to go eat the food. Eat the, food. <laughs> the real food. <laughs> like, this is, might not work out for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially if you are, especially if you know how to make real food. I mean, because, you know, you probably have some people who make mini, you know, miniature foods, but that's all they make. They're not real chefs, you know, and so <laughs> now, now you, get, you make mini you foods and you're bread. like, this looks really good. Maybe I should make this in real life, you know? So, yeah. So what, what's the uh, food that's, um, or the item, I should say, yeah, the food item that takes the longest to make, or is that the, or the most difficult to make? Because they're very tiny, you know, you worked in, in really small scale, so. Yes, uh, the longest I would have to say is the turkey dinner. Um, oh, and it okay. takes about uh, actually you have the turkey dinner right in there. You can see. Oh, so, it's so cute! Look at the carrots. That is so cool. Thank you. I have a, a little <laughs> ball container of um, like it's a ball glass. Uh huh. There's let's see. A little napkin. Yeah, a little napkin that's hard. Mm -hmm. Oh. Cranberry sauce with oranges, and wow. you can see inside the turkey. This usually That's takes so cool. about three days to make. Oh wow! That's including drying time, um, and then doing each by piece. Piece by piece. So, okay, yeah. okay. So is the coloring really hard to get to? Like the coloring of the food is like really yes, hard. Yes, yes. Um, the turkey is all colored. Um, mm -hmm. and it starts off like white, and okay. then I just pretty much. I just pretty much color it and yeah, it does take a while. That oh, wow. Does. Oh, wow. Okay. But, now you just use clay. You don't use any, any, any other materials. Um, so, uh, the turkey is made from scoffy clay and I do use resin and then a, um, a UV resin. Oh, okay. So we, I use that too. Okay. So do you, do you all, do you use other materials that you bring in for different, for, uh, for different types of food? Um, when it, we're talking about material wise, I'll, mm -hmm. you can maybe like add for texture, liquid sculpey or sand, um, oh, okay. extra texture. I do have a, a little bit mixture of materials. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many food items do you have? Oh gosh. Uh, actively right now on the website, I think there's about 250, I think. Wow. So there's a lot. There's definitely That's a lot. lot. There's different options that you can get with it. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. That's a lot. Do you take commissions? Do you do commission work too? I do commission work. Okay. Um, okay. Usually people, I uh, just email me or message me on the website and then mm -hmm. I can accept. It all depends on like what the workload is that I have. Okay. So my recent one is um, one of my customers lives in uh, Florida and they have a key lime pie festival. So mm. I, ha I made all these key lime pies like a really big one. Um, we had paper plates. Sure enough, I got I got a craving for key lime pie. 
Yes. Who so, wouldn't anyway? Look at you, I'm probably yeah. delicious. <laughs> I sent her a message. I'm like, look what I got. <laughs> Q I buy. That's funny. So who uh, so who works with this? Does, does your mom still is your mom still here? I'm sorry, I should ask that first. Is your mom still so, with you? Okay. Yes. So okay. Um you'll see my mom at uh some of the conventions. I do have a part-time employee. Okay. Um my do- my husband does help out too, but mm-hmm. um so it's just basically the th- um three. Okay. Four including okay. myself. Okay. Now out of those people, are you the only one that actually creates the product? And then your assistant does other work. So I um, create the product. Um, making miniature food is kind of like um, your handwriting. Not everyone can do it or copy your stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's very hard to find somebody that's going to be able to make food. Um, the girl who works part time for me, I've known her for years. She's actually helped me about 20 years ago when I first started. Oh, nice. Um, so she helped me then. She's like, I can't make this food. <laughs> so I'm like, here, I got an idea for you. <laughs> so she does like the side pieces that I need help with. Right, right. Um, okay. Like she'll put together boxes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so just us and it kind of works. So. That's good. I was just curious if other people made the food and you just made it, you know, yourself. Uh, no, I just make it. Mm-hmm. And so I know you, you were talking a few seconds ago about it's really hard to make it and it's hard to kind of duplicate it in a way. So do you not have molds for your food? Everything that you make is individual and just, so if you had 10 items, you would just create 10 items. They're all like one of a kind in a way. Yes. Kind of um, like okay. So the only thing that I have a mold for is I have another of the little jellos. So I have like, oh, that's so cute. Thank you. So <laughs> I have a mold for my jellos. Okay. All resin. Okay. Um, and it, the only thing that I have a mold for would be um, if I make the little cup, I have that mold. Okay. Any mm-hmm. of the resin pieces I do. Um, okay. Other than that, the only thing I have a. Uh, Cornish game hen mm-hmm. uh, and that I have a mold but other than that everything else you know okay. I just make it you just make it okay mm-hmm. okay now how many pieces do you work on at a time um it all depends uh jellos maybe 20 at a time maybe oh, wow. some of the larger pieces like a turkey maybe mm-hmm. like somewhere between two and five um it just all depends like what the item is and okay. how many people actually want want it Okay. All right. Okay. Now, do you have a limited amount of amount of items? So say you put 20 on the website, is you, do you stop at 20 or do you, if you, when you run out of those 20, do you make more? When I run out, um, there's an option on my website where someone can sign up to be notified if it comes back in stock. Okay. So after mm-hmm. I run out, then I have them sign up. And then when I get to a certain amount of people, I just make that to re- refill it. Okay. Okay. That's what I, that's what I was wondering. So mm-hmm. is it like, just ongoing like you know a particular piece is just ongoing or do you say well I'm only gonna make 50 of those and then once those are gone then I'm not gonna you know do anymore so so somebody so if you if you made 15 pies and then you had only two people request pies after those are gone will you make those yes yes I would I would make some more okay but that's pretty nice of you no And so, so you've been doing this for 21 years. Um, yes. What is, what, what does your expansion look like? What, what do you, you know, what do you plan on taking uh, what you do now and expanding it to keep it relevant for you? To keep it relevant. Well, um, so currently what I'm trying to do is just um, branch, branch out more. Mm-hmm. Um, so right now I do offer wholesale to stores. Okay. Um, I'm slowly getting onto Amazon to have Amazon um, ship items out. And I recently started a live TV, like a miniature food selling portion of live TV. And it's now available on the website just of okay. last night. Oh, and nice. Okay. It'll be able to stream to uh, Facebook, Instagram, mm-hmm. and YouTube, and then my website. You'll be able to watch the TV right on my website. And mm-hmm. what's cool about it, it's a shopping thing. So you have links that if you see something that you want, you can just click the link and add it to your cart. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. I like <laughs> that. Thank you. Does know, just that add more time of you, you creating something or it kind of just folds in with you already creating something? It just folds in. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I, you know, I have so much stock already made um, just throughout the years and some of the new items. I have mm-hmm. enough to just last me on the website for a while. Okay, so now you said you were doing this for twenty for twenty one years, and you've been doing it basically out your home. 
right? Yes. Okay. And, and I'm sure attending a lot of conventions, things like that. How has, you know, we've been in COVID for two and a half years now. I believe that's what it is. Um, how has COVID affected your business? Has it changed it in any way? Has it made it more popular? Has it, you know, slowed down? So how has COVID affected your business? So um, with COVID, I was able to expand a little bit more um, to uh, more platforms. Mm -hmm. Also, I was able to start uh, the Chef Gina's mini food classes. So somebody can go on the website, you can order like a little packet, um, order a class, say you wanted to learn how to make uh, donuts, mm -hmm. and then you can order the kit. I'll send you the kit with everything you need in it, except mm -hmm. for a couple of items. And then when you're ready, you can just download the video and just make the, make the food. Oh, okay. That's how that works. Okay. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if you ordered the kit, did you do like a live thing and you would somebody walk through it with you, but you already have the... Um, the class already okay recorded and then yes okay that, well that's great thing because then they can stop and <laughs> rewind mm -hmm. <laughs> when they haven't figured it out so okay very cool that's pretty cool I know I said I was going to order a class I am going to order a class I just got oh gosh you'd love it time I think I'm going to have a good time because I I really have been fascinated with uh with miniatures so intricate and it's just you know the thing that, that you're able to do with, with the food sometimes just amazes me. It's really, really, <laughs> Thank really you so pretty much. cool. You're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you for t sharing your talents with us. Talents <laughs> you probably didn't know that you could do until your mom said, make that doll some food, <laughs> which is pretty <laughs> that cool. That is true. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, so COVID, COVID has been good, been good in the sense of for your business because it's, mm -hmm. helped, it's helped you to expand and pivot too, right? To create other things that so you can still you know market what it is that you do yes yes yeah. it um actually it brought me to without like a whole nother doll community um which was the buyer's choice dolls mm -hmm. um, and then the Anna Lee dolls too so mm -hmm. um it was amazing how when there wasn't anything to do for those years or however long we were you know mm -hmm. people were inside people needed something to do and you know, it's just amazing how everyone got together and like, Hey, I want to do this. Let's take a class or let's do video. Mm -hmm. That's true. I think a lot of, a lot of the things, even when I talk to some of the other uh, doll guests that we've had, you know, I think it has helped them in a way because mm -hmm. they had to pivot. They had to learn other ways to expand their business and another way to like create, to, to still foster that community, you know, and the doll community has been really good at you know, fostering that community, you know, just being online as well. And because, you know, a lot of conventions shut down, a lot of things that people were used to going to and, and, yeah. and, and, and having that community, you know, outside of their home. But I think a lot of people have been really good at creating online conventions and things where people can just log on to and, and do that. So um, I know you mentioned you, I think we were, we were talking off camera, you do have something that's coming up, right? Yes. Something I online. I actually have a mini food convention coming up. It's September 24th and 25th. Nice. Um, somebody, it's actually going to be really fun. It's two days and you have the option where you can just buy a package online only and mm -hmm. you'll get access to the videos and printables that you can do. Mm. Or for $45, there's mm -hmm. an actual box that you get mini, mini food. You have, it's all carnival theme this year. Mm -hmm. So it's my first, first year. Nice. Um, so it'll have some miniature food and it's definitely worth, there'll, there'll be a lot of food in it and mm -hmm. you get miniatures, um, printables. Uh, there's something special for everybody to actually eat. I know oh, wow. nice. food and people get confused. They're like, are you supposed to eat this? I have to write a note. <laughs> this you could eat. <laughs> this you could eat. <laughs> Yes, just yeah. warn us. Just warn us ahead of time, right? That's all we yeah. need. It's just a warning. So, what made you decide to do the convention? Well, I know I never use this word, remint. So, <laughs> so back in the day, I hear that remint used to do um, a mini food convention. I was like, you know what? I've been thinking about this for a while too. It's like I, I would like to have it like uh, people can go out and meet up for lunch, but then no one's going to want to really travel. So I thought, well, I'll just do it online. And this has been in my head for like a few years. Wow. So finally on Facebook, somebody posted a picture, you know, the, um, where you can see like prior years. Uh, I forgot what they do. Well, mm -hmm. he reposted the picture. I'm like, you know what? I go, you think anyone would want to do a, a miniature convention? Everyone's like, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, all right, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Now I have it. <laughs> now you have it. Now. <laughs> and it's your first one. So that's cool. So, it is. It's, so it's all of your products, it's all of your, all of your creations that are going to be seen and, and people are going to interact with you at the convention and things like that. So yes. Okay. So um, one of the videos is going to show how to take some photographs um, behind the scenes of like what I do um, and what I use. Mm -hmm. um, and then another one is going to show a couple of miniature food, like how to make them um, okay. easy things. And then you get the kit in your box. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next one is I have to show how to make miniature perfume bottles. Oh, and nice. Too, and they're really, really pretty. So oh. I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's going to be really <laughs> fun for people who attend. That's great. Now, you were saying about boxes. So I, I think you also said you launched some boxes too. Uh, yes. For, so that's just another expansion of what you're doing. So, sh so t tell us a little bit about that. Yes. So I have um, the Foods of the World box set. And I wanted to do something to help people. Um, so when it, the Ukrainian war started, I did a mm -hmm. Ukrainian food box and a Polish food box. And it, pr part of the proceeds go to whoever in mm -hmm. like through the boxes to help with mm -hmm. you know, for mm -hmm. the people. Right. So it actually went over well. So I have a few boxes that are just a complete series set. Mm -hmm. um, that you can purchase not all of them are out yet um i okay. do have the two which is the ukrainian polish mm -hmm. and just something to kind of like you know we're buying food for ourselves it's something to, to help other people right right i get that i get that so is that part of the subscription boxes is it is this is it a separate entity or so know? that is separate i do okay. have a subscription box service too that i started oh, okay okay um and that's actually a lot of fun. You get, th it's three curated pieces in the box. Um, mm -hmm. Normally it's a theme box and you get, you get more than three pieces. Okay. Um, so that is separate. I have a lot of things going on over here. <laughs> that's good. We love to hear that. We love to hear all about it. Oh my right? gosh. You know? I have a lot. <laughs> I don't even know how I keep up. <laughs> It is the entrepreneur in us, you know, so yeah. I, I totally understand that. So, so a lot of people uh, watch the show and uh, they think, oh, I want to be creative. I want to be an artist, but I don't know if I could make enough money to do what it is that I do, you know, to survive, you know? So mm -hmm. now I know I want to preface this by saying you've been doing this for 21 years. So I don't want people to think, oh, I'm just going to jump into this. And this is going to happen. <laughs> but, um, but what you do does sustain your life or or sustain part of your lifestyle well um, i have a full-time job as well okay um, that i don't want to quit because i actually have a really good retirement afterwards oh nice um, so i do chef genius on the side but in reality it's a full-time job mm -hmm. um you know with things going like um new platforms and algorithms you have to keep up with everything mm -hmm. so it, it's it's a lot of work so somebody is considering like you know owning a business, you need to like really be focused and put your work in mm -hmm. because it's just not taking a picture, putting it up online. You need to search hash hashtags. You need to find out your community, like it, all yeah. that. It's just a lot. <laughs> Right. It's not just leaving it up there and thinking people are just going to find you. You have to engage right. with people. You still have to do a lot of things to, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that that business is, is surviving. So if you weren't working your full-time job, would what you've created help to sustain, you know, to give you a living? Yes, you can definitely, you can definitely, you know, especially that I've been doing this for such a long time mm -hmm. and I already have um, the clientele and I, know where to find everybody mm -hmm. uh, yes you can definitely mm -hmm. by going to conventions and shows there's plenty of options okay good to know thank you so now if somebody wanted to get into making food how would you tell them to start doing that oh gosh well <laughs> i would tell them to come take my classes <laughs> <laughs> So, right, take classes, right, with yeah, you. That classes. would be helpful, right? Yeah, I would definitely say take classes. Um, right. It's it's a lot. You have to, there's a lot. I, I know people might just think that, oh, just make some clay and throw it on Etsy, but it just takes a lot of work. <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> and study your craft, right? Regardless, yes. right? Study your craft. So, I mean, okay, before we go, I just want to uh, say, again, I, I love your food items. I, I think they're so cool. Um, Thank you. They're really so cool. Um, 
Now, um, you also have different sizes too, right? So you don't just create one scale. Yes, I have um, sizes for one six and I have one fourth. Um, and I also have the su subscription box too for one six and one fourth. Okay. Um, I have it for 18 inch dolls, uh, American Girl, and then um, I have life size food too. Oh, so you're still cooking real food. That's what you're saying? Well, no, this is life-size fake food. Oh, you're so life-size fake food. Okay. <laughs> okay. I would definitely need the notes then. Okay. Don't eat this. All right. <laughs> so I can see that now. <laughs> okay. So you, but so Jill, you don't do any other, you don't do real food anymore. You don't like. No, I don't okay. do any real food. I don't even cook at home anymore. My husband does that. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm, I'm too busy like, making this fake food, so let's, let's, you can cook the real food. It's all good. That's funny. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank I you really, for having me. really appreciate it. Um, tell everybody where they can find your, your beautiful uh, collection of foods there. Okay, so you can find um, at chefgenas.com online. Well, I'm looking forward to your convention. I'm looking forward to taking a class with you. Oh, uh, gosh. <laughs> I hope people get excited, you know, about wanting to learn a little bit more about how to make mini food because I, I think it's really, really exciting. And I think it's, um, it's I, I think it's pretty cool to learn how to do that. I really do. So I'm, I'm excited to do that. I'm excited for people to see what you do and, and the things that you create. So thank you. And thank you for being on In the Doll World with me, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. You're so welcome, love. Okay, thanks. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>